to be fair, they were the best players on that uh, Vici team. When you're They're on a 15th, 16th roster, that's not the hardest achievement. Hey, they were actually they were actually pretty pretty <laughs> good last year. Though Fair Jay enough. did Fair improve enough. during the end of the year. Shout out to Jay, I miss you. I think you solo killed rookie towards the end of the year, if I remember correctly. My memory as a <laughs> as an LPL fan. But well, uh, moving away from the tangent, let's get on into this game. Number two here between IG and WE. IG with a 24 minute win in game number one. They're gonna look to rinse and repeat, but WE they have this composition. They've got Beishung's as uh, Echo. They've got Teacher must Pantheon, and we'll see if they can go for this roaming death squad. Roaming death squad, a good way to put it. We can see a lot of aggression around that mid jungle 2v2, especially if WE want to try and find some invades in the enemy bot side jungle. But looking at that straight 2v2, you said you were excited to see what happens there. We have a Tom Kench matchup. We're going to have 280 carries, clearing waves. I don't expect too much coming out from either side. It is going to be a lot more about the 2v2 and 4v4 in Botside River. Or it's going to be about the Shy just standing under Morgan's turret, making his life miserable. But you are Vlad early game, so shouldn't shouldn't happen just yet. I mean, he's going to be Vlad all game. I mean, <laughs> early game and late game. <laughs> I don't think he gets to change that far way through. As much as I'm sure he would love to. He's going to go for the phase rush. We've got the unsteel sealed spell book for Morgan in the top lane, but that signature Dark Harvest for Beishang's Echo, this is what he loves to run when he's playing this jungle. Yep, a lot more of the scaling option coming out from him with that Dark Harvest. He is pretty much the only one who takes this rune in this matchup. Not about these early game skirmishes or even extended skirmishes that we've seen uh, some Echoes take Conquer. Of course, the other early game option could be something like the Electrocute, mm -hmm. but not on Beishang. Not on Beishang, and it, I think, represents quite well how WE like to play because they want to snowball. They want to use this Echo. They want to use this Pantheon to make plays in the bottom side, find fights around the Dragon like we were talking about in game number one. Bit of a 2v2 in the bottom side, but nothing much going to come of it until that level two mark. But Puff is about to hit with this minion. They're not going to be too aggressive. It is Varus Tom Kench, so there's only so much he can force. Oh, Ooh. what a hook from Missing. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But this is what we were talking about. This is why his Thresh was banned away. This is what we were talking about with Missing, but at the same time, it is against Tom Kench, so no early aggression no going to be you. had. And now we get to see if Beishong can affect the mid lane, but Rookie kind of respecting. Kind of, but not respecting enough. He's nope. going to be stunned up. Cleanse Ooh. comes through. He's going to be followed and taken down. <laughs> First blood to Tijima. And the emote from Beishong, but Lu Yen doesn't have the ability to stick to either of them, so just going to put down the Haymaker, deal some damage. Oh, what? How does that hit? Missing. He's a Nautilus genius, I guess. I, I don't know how that one hit. That was a bit of a lollipop, but there you go. Though this is a very feels good moment for Lu Yen, able to get a little bit of experience. Oh no, he's gonna be a good jungler and hold that for the mid laner. We were talking about this <laughs> the other day. He's so disappointed about we that. We were talking about this the other day that uh, I remember one episode of Euphoria with Kajal where he said, the best feeling for a juggler <laughs> is when one of your soul laners die and you get to go pick up all of their farm. To be fair though, that was before the changes to jungle XP. So <laughs> that was a little bit more of an exaggerated situation. Either way, you are absolutely right, Lian. Gonna be a good guy jungler, allows Rookie to come back and get his farm. And you can see the farm advantage for Rookie in that mid lane already. Because Tichama, he's got a kill though. That's the most important thing. And Pantheon is one of these champions where you get ahead, he's one of the strongest in the game. But if you fall behind, he's kind of useless. And Rookie with that wave would have been able to try and hold the freeze if he wanted. Lian has found the bottom lane here. Jumon immediately flashes away. Rookie's gonna hold them off, but he gets hooked on in. He doesn't have summoners available. Ignited and pushed away. Lian, the target here as the stun comes through, but it's not gonna land. Lian walks away, missing low, but he'll survive. Yep, a bit of trading from both sides there. IG trying to find that one, but not able to get anything. Jomung, though, having to burn those summoners is pretty big on the side of WE. This is a massive wave for Teacher Mai. It's gonna slowly push towards him and base chunk. <laughs> Really, really wants to make a repeat play onto Rookie. He's going to respect it, but the Ooh. stun chain. Oh, it's not quite there, but it doesn't matter. Z Drive plus a spear, and that's a dead Syndra. Just a great combination early, having that mixed damage, having the setup for Echo's parallel convergence from that point click stun on Pantheon, 
and Echo and Pantheon, both champions that are great at diving. So now we yes. get to see, once they get those ultimates, where are they going to transition this lead? Actually, we don't need to wonder where, because we have Orn in the top lane. We're not going top lane, we're going bottom side. They're not going top lane. Morgan, he's probably going to be a part of the play, though, because we've seen many times he's happy to TP down and get involved. Dragon is on the map. That's typically where WE like to focus in the early stages of the game. IG also executing the game the way they like, just playing out laning phase, Lu Yen looking for that farm, everyone independent from one another, not, not bringing it together as a team. That is not how we know IG. And when we look at how their combos play out this game, I'm not exactly sure where Lu Yen can and would want to look. Again, it, you have a very hard time getting onto the champions of WE. Dude, missing has not missed at all this game. Pun not intended, but like, seriously. He just hits every single time and it's actually making Puff and Southman struggle a little bit. Oh God, again. <laughs> he wants revenge against the Azir of game number one. Lien is here though. Doesn't mean they need to be cautious. They can't go too far for this. Well, and they just don't have the ability, unless Rookie hits Scatter of the Week. They're just going to continue to bully Southwind here. A couple of hits onto Puff as well. Ooh, look mid lane on a minimap, though. Yeah, maybe more oh, of they a back off. On. No kill coming out here, by the way. No yeah. kill from Puff. They still want to be able to fight. Just controlling River right now on the side of WE. Going to be able to pick up that Scuttle Crab. So now Missing going to come over and help Beishan out. Remove the resistances from the Scuttle Crab with a bit of CC. And they're just going to start to clear some vision as well. Southwind is here. Lien is here. We could have a fight on our hands. Parallel convergence over the wall. In goes Pei Shung, but he's knocked back by the scatter. He steals away the blue buff. Here comes Teachima. They want to kill onto Lien, but Southwind saves him, pulls him to safety. Z Drive won't be popped, and Southwind flashes. Teachima now the target. Scatter the weak, not available, but it's still a kill anyway. One for Rookie and Lien once more. He's on to missing. Parallel Convergence is here. Haymaker doesn't land, but there's two really nice stuns. Lien falls and it's a kill for Jormung. In goes Beishang once again, but he's gone way too deep this time. Can't finish the kill and he goes down to Puff. The end of that was so unfortunate where you could see what Beishang was thinking. He thought his ult was right on top of Rookie and Southwind and he'd be able to pick up those kills, but unfortunately he isn't. WE trying to execute the comp. Uh, the way we expected them to by using this Pantheon Global looking for these. Ooh. Shai uses the Hema Plague there, but I think it was more to deter an all in from Morgan. Perhaps? Maybe he just realizes he's never going to get a kill, so he's just using it for pressure. Yeah, looks like he just wanted to put some pressure and be able to push out this wave, but already showing this clip, Teacher Mod overextended. Of course, they went in without Joe Monk being able to get here. Lo Yen flashing over and. Really cheeky Blast Plant coming out from IG. And we see Beishang able to pick up these kills and look at his ult. Had he been a bit more patient, maybe would have been able to find the kill onto Rookie, but just put him back in a bad position and Puff able to pick that one up too. I think he just wanted the Dark Harvest stacks. <laughs> I think he maybe assessed and was like, look, I'm dead anyway. Give me these Dark Harvest stacks. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong there. <laughs> it's very possible that I'm wrong. IG though, they've moved up to the top side. They want to try and find this Rift Herald. We don't have Teacher Ma's ult up yet, so if he does join the fight, pretty much just gonna have to walk into the likes of IG. Of course, so Morgan does have Call of the Forge God, but looks like WE don't even, they should know what's going on. No one's showing in the bottom lane, but not posturing to do anything. Well, they're slowly but surely moving up. They're gonna face check on towards Rookie. Missing misses for the first time this game. Based on parallel convergence, already has to use the Chrono Break. That's a huge cooldown for him. Now Morgan trying to get the flank. I think they're realizing with Chrono Break on cooldown, this becomes a very difficult fight. WE are just so over eager. They could they could have waited it out, just kept standing and they found a pull onto Southwind though. Morgan doesn't get the ult, but it doesn't matter. Southwind goes down. Lien, the next target, is Haymakers on cooldown, and he doesn't have a flash. Jaumon gets that one for himself. Rookie and the Shy. They look like they want to go back in, but there's just no way. Well, I was wrong. They weren't overeager. They find the pick with the dredge line. They do have enough damage in this early game to come out ahead. And they're the ones who get the Rift Herald. They are going to be able to grab this for themselves. And this is looking good for WE. When you look at what happened in game number one, this is Ooh, a totally different uh, 
seen. Puff's in trouble. Does have his flash, but it's too late on that one, and he's just going to go down. Held on to the flash, but I, I don't think that was the best decision. I think he could have just flashed right away and probably would have gotten towards Southwind in time. Rookie has his ult right now. He could go for the solo kill. Not willing to flash for it. Nope. I guess Aegis Assault must have been available. Yeah, true. Should have been available. Probably wouldn't be respecting where Morgan is on the map. Shouldn't really be anywhere close by to where it would matter if he did flash ult, so... But well, a lot of craziness happening so far. Yeah, and importantly, a lot of craziness that has led to a gold lead for WE. After game number one, this is not what I expected to see. But once again, this Echo, this Pantheon for WE, they are signature picks and they are paying off in a magnificent way. And let's talk about how IG want to and can play this game out. Their options just seem very limited. You need to hope WE runs into you if you want a team fight, or you need to try to find some kind of flank coming out from the Vlad, but you don't really have any agency to push out first and set a vision. So your only real option is playing through side lanes with the Vladimir and Tom Kench hovering. But even then, that, that just feels like a stretch when WE can just look to engage on your core in the mid lane with Orn. Rift Herald in the bottom lane here. They're going to try and force this bot lane tier one. They will be successful in doing so. The question will be, what is the answer here from the side of IG? I don't feel like there's able to be an answer. Oh, no, Puff. He's still got the flash, but once again, he's not going to dodge any CC with it. Last time, it was IG playing games yes. on both sides of the map. This time, it's WE. That was great, right? Pressuring bot and top at the same time. Going to lose some CS in the mid lane, but it's not too big of a deal. Beishung. Could be in trouble. Stunned up. Rookie has his ult, but obviously Baishang not the best target when that Chrono Break's available. I like WE also not over over aggressing for that. Just going to back off. They got the two picks they needed. They got Botling Turret. You know, I've just thought of something. Even outside of, obviously, the Pantheon and the Echo, these are picks that we regularly see Baishang and Teachamar on. But these were the responses to the Blind Syndra pick, right? Both of them are great against Syndra. Yep. Southwind wants to make a play, though, onto Morgan. Puff wants some revenge, but that's how you use a flash before CC, ladies and gentlemen. Southwind's not done. He's going to use the stun to try and force the play. In the meantime, there's shenanigans in the bottom side. Leon takes a bit of damage. Blue buff went down. Call of the Forge God It's on to Puff. Exhaust is there, though. It means Brittle can't be procced again. They'll finish the kill, and Morgan goes down. Yeah, WE tried to answer on the bottom half of the map, but weren't able to find it, so... Nice answer for the side of IG, but ultimately not going to translate into an objective. It's just going to be a nice little kill. A little bit of gold for Puff, and I think much needed because he's fallen behind in CS, he's fallen behind in kills, and he's been the target of a lot of these plays. Important to mention, though, he did actually have to use his heal in that engage, and Southwind used both of his summoners. And there we just see what we'd already saw on our screen of them trying to catch out Morgan. Did look like he was going to be able to get away, so... I wonder how they hold him in place here. Ooh, just opens the ult immediately. And you mentioned the exhaust already, just able to hold him down enough to find that kill. Really nicely done from the side of Puff and Southwind. We mentioned it before. When they get a the chance, they will go for a kill, even in a safe lane like Varus Tom Kench. I mean, that was a 1v2, to be fair. Yeah. But I'm just saying that they're the kind of players that recognize when they have an advantage. True. We. Puff and Southwind definitely are not a passive bot lane. Maybe not the most aggressive relative to some of the other players we have in LPL, but a bot lane that's able to recognize the windows they have. I'd say they're less aggressive than the WE bot lane, typically, when you think of missing and jumping. I mean, we've seen it in the early laning phase of this game. And missing I just looks for every single chance. Sorry, just tangenting to another, like, yeah. me and you were talking the other day about how iBoy just always jumps forward, so... He wants to fight you. He yeah. always wants to fight you. Sometimes it doesn't work out, sometimes it works out great. Yep. Puff a lot more calculated than that. Not going to give up any advantages or put himself in harm's way when he doesn't need to. Wow. IG didn't get a single tower plate this game. That's actually huge when you consider this is the team that wins by winning their lane. Well, and it's just you look at their champions. Orn early game going to be able to do fine against Vladimir. In the mid lane, we saw how much emphasis Bay Shang put towards that. It was really going to be a zero or a hundred type situation. Oh, Leon could be in trouble. Look how much damage the Z Drive does. They dodge the Haymaker and now complete control of this red buff area. 
And Lo Yen with no Predator, no Phase Rush. What's he gonna do? Just run into a lane and just kind of hope for the best. Hope that someone on WE is overstepping. Pretty much. Well, that's what Bei Shung's been doing, and he's been <laughs> he's been uh, been able to get a lot of but kills off of that you, strategy. You have the setup, right? You you have point and click CC coming in from your Pantheon. Call of the Forge got from Orin, Dredge Line, and Ultimate coming out from Nautilus. And for Buff Lu stepping way up the lane <laughs> yeah, ten yeah. times in a row. For Lu Yen, you need to hope that one of your two carries, Rookie or Puff, hits a skill shot. Well, off the back of that last kill that went down, unfortunately for Beisheng, he's lost his 100% kill participation that he was stacking up earlier on in the game. And also, the potential of a Dark Harvest stack. You can see he's on actually six stacks right now. Every single one of those kills that's gone down that he's been a part of, he's managed to get a stack from. But that's going to be a Drake going their way. Obviously, IG got the first one of the game. Tichima here to answer the push, though. Missing going to be alongside him. And this rift is going to be, the mountain rift is going to be so crucial for the side of WE. We see the fact that they have Nautilus and Orin going to build so many resistances. And just getting the shield in general going to be so great against the likes of Syndra and Vladimir. If WE can stack up three mountain drakes to take the souls, it's going to be really good for them to be able to close out this game through the skirmishes that they need to take with two melee carries in Pantheon and Echo. So let's talk a little bit about scaling here because we've got a 4k lead in favor of WE. But I feel like IG, the longer this game goes on, the better it looks for them. Because bear in mind, the Shy is on Vladimir. You've got Syndra in the mid lane. You've got an on-hit Varus in that bottom lane as well. Like, the problem when we talk about scaling is we're, we're setting it up in a vacuum of if it's late game and these comps are even. Yeah. Which, if you're WE, it shouldn't be like that. Sure. Because... IG's comp has no agency in finding a way to get ahead. Late game, they will be able to fail much better, not only in terms of scaling, but then, of course, if WE want to push into your base, they need to walk into you. So you, at this point now, don't need any engage either. So that will be a much better point for IG, but WE should look to be at a 5, 6k gold advantage by that point. You'd hope so. Right now, it's just under a 4,000 gold advantage. Morgan wants to turn it into more because he's trying to find the fight. Teach him up coming in from the back as well. The Shy uses his proto belt, but they're just going to settle for the set in the jungle right here. Showstopper comes through and might actually save his life here. He's taken down and there's a Comet Spit to finish the job. The Shy, he's already used his pool, I believe. He's going to go in onto Jomung, but he's not going to be allowed to get a kill in this situation. Double for the Pantheon. Snowballing on the side of WE, doing so good. They have all the proactive tools in their composition. And this is why WE is probably the most exciting mid-tier team in LPL to watch because once they do get one of their signature comps, they just always know how to keep their foot on the gas. This is the WE that I know and love coming through here. Now with a Herald in the mid lane, they get yet another tower. Morgan in the meantime pushing in the bottom side. 9G, all they can do is answer with a tier one in the top lane. Yeah, and if you're WE, you, you feel really fine making this trade. You're coming out ahead in terms of gold. That side lane tower actually doesn't do anything for the side of IG. Of course, they will have the shy in a side lane, but it's going to be all about the bottom lane later on with Baron up. <laughs> Some fire cave just stole away the blue buff. Good. <laughs> that feels bad. It doesn't feel bad. But hey, bad. Morgan got it. I was going to say, it feels great for Morgan. <laughs> it feels bad for Beishon. Morgan, Morgan set, set that up soon. and hit S and was waiting for Beishong to arrive. We see Beishong's blue will come up soon, fans. It's all good. Just... <laughs> Just well, being efficient, sharing the blue buffs across the team. I don't think it's an issue. I just think it's funny. That's true. Those are different things. I don't think WE have many issues right now. I think they're feeling on top of the world. Certainly on top of Mount Target in that mid lane. This goes back to the story that you set up. Actually, I want to ignore the story you set up. Not for this play, but to see the fact that WE have four sweepers. True. Yep. Oh, actually, IG almost there with three at this point, but... Just W going to do a great job of, you know, their comp is so good at playing through Vision Denial, running a double assassin setup, so mm. if they can surprise you and get on top of you, they're going to come out ahead. Well, a guy that claimed to be Challenger on YouTube told me that having sweepers when you're ahead is better than having wards because you can deny the opponent's vision. And if you're both in the dark but you're in the jungle, you win by default. I don't know how true that is. I'm waiting for you to correct me or not correct me. Having more sweepers while ahead is better. That Hell is, yeah. That is true. Good job, YouTube guy. I mean, the rest of the logic was was pretty weird, but... 
Well, you know. But also going he is back a YouTube to YouTube guy. <laughs> Going back to what we were saying before, this also matches the narrative that you set up that a lot of IG series do go to three games. True. Yeah, so they, they are a team that has dropped more games than I think they reasonably should have so far this split. But you know what? That's why people love watching IG, because you never quite know what you're going to get. Also interesting to see Rookie go with the GLP in this situation where going to be all about setting up those picks, but getting a pick onto either Echo or Pantheon will be quite hard. Oh, Puff's in trouble here. Stun comes through. It's only on Southwind. As Puff is just going to be chased out. Zed Drive comes through. There's a knockup as well. Southwind saves the Varus, though. Tichima has to escape. They get the kill anyway. Double up finish that one. Now the Shy. He's on this Vladimir, remember, and he's in the middle of everyone, but he's exhausted and might go down anyway. Leyen can't finish the kill. Tichima takes down the Shy. Rookie finds himself alone. He's going to be chased on down. Tichima will have a spear in just a moment's time. Bay Shunk chases him, and Morgan bellows him down. Great team fight coming out once again from WE. They're going to be able to turn this into a Baron. Not going to get to any point where scaling matters because. Exactly. Again, their comp is all the proactivity. They are able to continuously force the issue. And are we going to see Southwind try to steal Baron? No, he's walking away. Dude, a singular tongue lash. That could be the difference maker. No, but you're absolutely right. And this Pantheon pick especially. It's one of those picks. I said it earlier that it's feast or famine. You either win the game just off a couple of picks early and snowball like crazy. But if you don't do that, you're completely useless. You're like a large minion with a stun and a block. But he's 7 1 and 1 right now. So he's definitely in the first category. We actually saw in their last series, I'm pretty sure, against BLG, the one game they won was off the back of his Pantheon, and he picked up the MVP and had a great performance in that game. Yeah. He's a uh, certainly accomplished player when it comes to this Pantheon. And once again, one of the biggest criticisms of WE this split has been Champion Pools and IG not respecting this signature in the mid lane for WE and suddenly the difference between game one and game two it's like night and day. Yeah, but I, I could understand if IG want to leave it open after winning game one, not feeling too threatened with the position yeah. they're in, being 11-2 in the standing, saying, hey, we can leave this up, we can get the practice against it. I, I don't want to use the term limit testing, but just being more focused on what they're playing rather than what the enemy is doing. And also the fashion in which they won the first game. Like, it was a 24-minute speed run of League of Legends. Yes, like yes it was. When you win game one like that, you're going to be feeling confident going into game number two. So I can understand drafting maybe not around your opponent's win conditions, drafting more around your own. IG have never drafted around their opponent's win conditions anyway, so True. why change things up now when it's gotten you to 11 and 2 in the standings? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But Leon, his face might be the one broken this time. Southwind going to be knocked up, and there's a huge bullet time across two of them. This is going to be a 24-minute win. This is literally WE turning things around onto IG. Teacher nearly goes down to the tower. Rookie barely survives. In hip falls, Leon needs to be careful. Had Rookie died there, if Leon dies here, it's still possible that WE can just snowball. Miss from missing, uncharacteristic, but it means that WE have to back away. Yeah, and still not exactly the same speed run we got in game one, but nope. WE are in position to make it something similar with Baron coming up in 50 seconds. That bottom inhibitor is the best one to have taken. That's the amount of buff remaining from the Baron. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's still a little while away uh, on the Baron, but you know what? I don't think it's really about um, pressure with the Baron right here for WE. It's more about just finding a fight and forcing the issue. Yeah, they're so far ahead, they can just constantly keep doing this. Can can put pressure in multiple lanes as well, since Kichirama does have that global ultimate. Able to find the one pick on the end of it. I'm kind of surprised they weren't able to finish that yeah, kill, Yeah, me too, honestly. actually. I feel like Comet Spear was surely available, but either way. Farron about to time out. So the question will be, what does WE do now? Because, as you rightly said, without Farron, does become a little bit more difficult. There's not much siege potential here. And how do you force them to fight when they're underneath the towers? I mean, as we just saw from that last fight, the side of WE can dive. They don't necessarily want to dive to the Nexus, but they can definitely dive, you know, an inner turret or inhibitor turret. Well, we'll see if they're willing to. We've seen WE pull the trigger on those kind of plays before for the positive and for the negative. So I'm excited to see if they can pull that off against a team like IG. 
Their gold lead is ridiculous right now. They're 9,000 up against the first team in the league. And this is the version of WE that we love to watch. This is the type of gameplay that we love to see from them. But it does feel like WE, they live and die by the draft. They really do. I think it's a, a feeling that all fans can agree with when they see things like the Rumble and Pantheon come out. They can kind of breathe a sigh of relief. They can feel really good about what's going to come in the game. But pretty much any of the other picks we've seen come out from them have been really lackluster. Oh, maybe aside from the a Soul, that's another one. Yep. But not a champion that fits in all circumstances. We've seen that Diana have one or two good games, but uh, yeah, it's yeah, been kind of hit or miss. That's been one of his fallbacks that's like, it, I think he had one really good game, but then the other he two did, games uh, yeah, have yeah. been... He had one decent game great. on Diana, the other two games he sat under his turret, and we just saw <laughs> Bei Shang in the bot lane just go down over and over again. We've also seen him pick up the Vlad, Vladimir in the mid lane. Not the best champion, I'd say, right now, especially when the meta is so good about having this party in the mid lane, and especially the level 3 crash that you can get and turning that into some type of pressure. Beishang's found a 1v1 onto Lien. Southwind can't find the Tongue Lash, and it's actually going to be a stun onto Morgan, so he doesn't get his own ultimate off. This is a lot used by WE for not much gain, but in goes Tichima. He's got uh, his shield as well from the Veil. Oh, triple knockup coming out from the Nautilus, but they can't finish off these kills. Tichima goes back Ooh. in Southwind with yet another save. And not the best fight here. The Shy still wants more on this one, slow from the Timewinder. And IG, very nicely done. WE not able to just get on top of IG, you know, in a standard formation in the lane or in the jungle. IG kind of pulling them apart. And especially Southwind doing such a good job at using Devour, saving a few of the members of IG. And WE not able to continue the snowball. But let's be realistic, they're still 10k gold up. Yeah, they're still in a great spot. But it's, it's good to see IG obviously having an answer here. But... Importantly, I feel like Beishong went way too deep there. It felt like a very much a confidence play on Talia. It's like we saw in the previous replay on that Nexus play where probably didn't need to go that far, right? Could have just been happy with the kills you got around bot in him. But just but wanting hey, to snowball this game a bit too fast. Yeah, and you know what? When you're currently ninth in the standings and you're 10k gold up on the team that's first in the standings and you're kind of the reason that that's been happening. I think you get the license to just have a little bit of fun in the game and try and make the play happen if you see the opportunity. So I'll give them a pass this time. But it's important to mention, as you say, they still have a tremendous lead right now with Baron spawning as well. This could be their way into the win. Yeah, they can now finally start trying to force IG out of their base and have a better time finding this engage, have more terrain for IG to need to traverse. So this is where we're going to see the game start picking back up. And of course, Soul Point, gonna, well, we're at Soul Point, but Soul going to be up in, you know, four minutes. Yep. So well, the, the Baron could be the bridge to that point in the game. But we do have to mention, it always feels like you have to, especially with the Shy on Vladimir. Three items have come on through now. He's only going to get stronger. And Vladimir, one of these champions that at the six item point, one of, if not the strongest champion in the game. True, but at least on the side of WE, they do have the Ornn, so we already start seeing those Ornn items coming through for WE. A big one will be once and if Beishang picks up that death cap. They're going to really start hitting hard. Beishang wants to find the fight. In goes Teacher Mark Morgan's there already, and the Shy is the target. Goes for his pull, as we see pulls onto the rest of the team, but with his pull down, he'll surely fall. There goes the Vladimir, and now onto Rookie. There's the knockup. The Brittle does so much by itself. Southwind falls, a pull onto the carries. Puff and Rookie both fall. No, Rookie's still surviving. Teach him, although he's not going to allow that to be the case. Bullet time does nothing. Whoa. Rookie with the scout of the week. The oh common spear misses, God. and Rookie gets the shutdown. It might be a loss, but hey, at least you went out with a bang. We were talking about how W need to pull IG to bear, and they actually don't. They find the engage in the mid lane. They just go for the fight instead. Another one for Jomung. 10-0-3 on the MF. But this was all about Beishang. I feel like he's a comfortable MVP from this one because his echo is just beautiful. Yep, really good echo.